everybody, it's Norm from Tested. I'm here at Monster Palooza in Pasadena, California, where Oculus has a booth set up uh, for their medium tool. And this is Gio, one of the character artists at Oculus. You've been doing some demos, and this is he, one of your works. Yes, um, so to talk a little bit about this one, this was uh, based off of a concept by Carlos Suante. Um, and, you know, I pitched to the medium team for this year's Monster Palooza. What if we, uh, we take one of Carlos's uh, amazing concepts and build a fully painted, 3D printed sculpture out of it? And that's what you have a lot of here, the demonstration that you can sculpt something digitally in VR and then put it in the real world with 3D printing. This was not one print, this is multiple pieces? Um, I believe this was about separated into uh, 20 to 25 different pieces that was engineered um, to fit into one gigantic piece. And, um, and and printed, the, uh, uh, painted then by the amazing Tim Gore. So uh, it was, it was Gore, quite an really? effort. Yeah, yeah. Wow, That's a awesome. legend in the uh, in, in the effects industry, right? Now, so Medium's been out for about 18 months now, and for the first like year or so, when we saw things created with Medium, there was definitely a look to it that said yeah. that was made in VR with Medium with those specific tools. What's striking to me is when I look at this, I can't tell if this is was made using a VR tool or using something like ZBrush. Is, mm. is that just from your experience as uh, someone who worked in the video games industry? What is it about the tool now that can make this something that looks indecipherable from something built in 2D? Um, there were a lot of uh, updates to Medium, you know, with from from when it was released and. For me, one of the biggest things uh, added was the move tool. So mm. prior to that, we were sort of sculpting um, in, in shaving cream, as, as I like to describe it, without much control of the surface. But once the move tool came out, we have we now have more control of the, the forms. And so, and also it, with experience in terms of uh, usage, you know, I've found ways to um, to do more detail work on uh, the sort of smaller tertiary areas here. Um, so, you know, I took this about 70 to 80 percent in medium and then brought it into ZBrush for further refinement to, to really get into the really subtle uh, surface detail uh, stuff on the surface that really brings right. out the, uh, the form. Right? right, and that's something that could also be done in medium as well. I look at some of your other artists where, like yeah. Raz, his stuff, all that surface texture, he does that all within this yeah. tool? Yeah, so it's, it's entirely possible to do in medium and I think the beauty of it is like it's it's very open for artists, right? They can take it, take it to medium, export it to ZBrush, and you know, vice versa. So, and then export as a file. Export to, as to print. A, yeah. At the end of the day, it's, it's it exports out as the same file for print, and you know, like you could either do that in ZBrush or medium. Now, do you work with a standard maquette or a body form that you sculpt on top of in medium? Do you create your own stamps, or is this all? from those basic primitives, from spheres and, and cylinders and um, cubes? Sort of my philosophy has always been like working with primitives because those are always a, a good basis for, uh, for strong primary shapes. And so mm -hmm. as I work down in the lower hierarchy of forms, always with primitives, manipulating it with a move tool, um, combining it onto the layer. And, and it just becomes sort of a, a series of, of shapes that interlock with, that shows strength in the structure. So, and medium is great for that because you know the layer system is it allows for that kind of workflow. And when you're designing this, are you doing this? You're doing this as a concept sketch, right? Like this is not a rigged, moving figure. So, is that something that the medium team and, and you're trying to push for concept artists to start using this tool? Yeah, and, and I, I think it's a very strong tool for concept or pre-production work to show to clients because. I could, wh how I did this was I brought in Carlos's uh, artwork image mm -hmm. in the background and just with, with that scaled up, just started blocking it in, you know, with, with um, the, the ske sketchier version of uh, the clay tool. Mm -hmm. And once I have those, those um, the gesture resolved, then I started um, quickly refining it from there. And, and then, you know, I don't really have to take it to the point where it's fully detailed to show a client. I could just put a client in there show them the creature right. in the context of scale and they can kind of get an idea of what it feels like, you know, if, if this were a real thing standing in front of them. Well, that's the so. other interesting thing is scale because this is of a particular size which you could have scaled at any size. When yeah. you sculpt, do you sculpt at a certain scale, life scale? Is this on a tabletop in front of you or do you imagine it, you know, eight feet tall? Uh, both, essentially. When I'm, when I'm usually in medium, I'm always 
zooming out to see the, the whole context of the creature just so I'm seeing it uh, as a whole. But, you know, I can also say, you know, Carlos had intended this to be a certain uh, height. I would scale it to that height, look at it from that angle to see if the proportions work, scale it down, scale it, you know, zoom out just to kind of see how the forms are interlocking and working together. So that, that's what it affords you in VR is that you're seeing it in the context of the, the camera of the eye, you know, versus mm -hmm. like a cheated camera in, in say, other packages where it, it kind of distorts it. Here you're seeing it one-to-one -one with what you would expect in, in reality. That's super, super cool. So. Now, as an artist working with the Medium team, I'm sure you give them a lot of feedback for features, and it's a tool that's constantly updated. Yeah. Any hints of what other artists can look forward to? Um, that's something the Medium team can most likely speak better uh, to. But I mean, you know, I have I always have a laundry list of things that uh, that I have in, in mind and have been, you know, pushing. Uh, you feel like your needs are being them. met. Yes, totally. And and in terms of uh, community relations and, and all that, the Medium team have been amazing in, in just listening to the users. And that's why we're able to do this now is because they listen. You know, they. We ask, they implement, and, and, and it happens. So, you know, it's been awesome. That's working. really cool. Not just a tool that's easy to get into and fun to use, but yeah. also catering to someone like you, who's a professional. Yeah, totally. Gio, it's great to meet you here Thank at Monster Palooza. Thanks for sharing. Thanks, Norm.